Hola community, welcome to Blender Today Live, episode 240. Post after Blender conference. So this week, in terms of development, not a lot had happened. Some of the, um, the changes that I'm gonna mention, they were actually from the week before Blender conference because uh, many of the main developers, core developers and contributors from the community come to Amsterdam to celebrate this weekly uh, this weekly, this yearly gathering. Imagine if it was weekly, I, that we would just go nuts. Every presentation it's updated. That is not that every, every thing that was presented in the, at the Blender conference has been uh, uploaded as it was happening. So there were no live streams this, this year, but every video, if you go to the Blender channel on YouTube and Blender conference, you will find there that every presentation is in this playlist plus the there's a few recaps there's a recap for the first day and then there is one for the second day and there will be one for the uh, the overall there will be no third day but it will be like a, a global one which is on this week i think i think uh, they mentioned it's gonna be available this week already so without further ado I think we can start to see what is new in Blender as of today. With the, oh, we should start with for um, a for add check for well for Qualcomm devices on Windows. This is a long title, so I have to rely on what the developers use as titles for which section they belong to. And in this one, it's the um, check for Qualcomm devices. This. Um, it's also known as like um, Windows on ARM, um, on ARM devices. Prior to 4.0, um, the Blender could run, but it was also giving issues due to drivers. So this one is adding a check. This this change makes it so adds a check and it reports it properly. Um, ideally, apparently, so uh, regarding this change, apparently there is something that might that there is a driver update uh, that will be available. Um, in some days from now, I'm not sure. I'm just reading what, what the developers put up here. So um, double check by yourself. Blender is not officially supported there, but you know, some people make it work. Um, next for B for BLF <laughs> Blender font, improved cached fallback font setup. This is when Blender cannot find a font. It uses our own uh, fallback. In this case, there is now the cached fallback fonts. And there is also some other changes in the font coming in the user interface section. Let's see. The chat, what is it? Beacon was just amazing, says Subsurface Talks. Nice, today live is our weekly conference. Ah, thank you, Divyank. Any idea when Blender 4.0 will be released? Should be November 7th. Should be, if everything goes okay according to plan um but yeah don't um you could wait a bit if 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 some things don't go expected as expected remember that these big releases are very likely to have a 0.1.2 release 0.1 especially like uh unless everybody out there is testing their files right now please go to builder.blender.org and do your own little bit there by checking the beta or the alpha, checking all your files, make sure that they work. And if they don't report, because we are going to Beacon 1, like not Blender conference, but Beacon the, it's a bit confusing. It's a stage in development right before the release. So we enter now on Wednesday and ideally the release will be next Wednesday. So yeah, next change, C4 curves. <laughs> Add edit mode operator to set attribute values. Similar to this previous um, operator for meshes, this adds a simple operator to set the attribute values for curves edit mode. The operator is very basic and is only meant to be a first step for more attribute editing features. Very basic, but it's so basic that it's one of the things that are like crucial. Um, being able to select a curve, a point, and assign attributes directly to it. It's like when you assign, like it's nice to have weight paint mode, 
but assigning weights to a specific um, bunch of vertices and elements is very important. So pretty happy to see this here, making it to curves. And this is curves with plural curves, not curve. C for cycles, add support for AMD, RNA, RDNA, 3 APUs. Yeah, that was added by AMD. <laughs> Thank you, AMD. We go from AMD to Apple because Apple developers have removed the experimental status of the Metal RT setting. So now there is a new setting called Automatic. Uh, you can enable, disable it, or just put it on auto. And as I mean, we can just look at the code <laughs> instead of looking at a picture, automatic. Automatically pick the fastest intersection method. I guess this will be based on the capabilities of your of your computer, of your Mac. And it's super exciting to see this coming into. And it's, it's fun to see how little code is it, just like checking for certain settings. So it means that everything happens in the driver. Um, and actually tonight, uh, Apple has a scary fast presentation, which even becomes a timer when you mouse over. Like, wow. How can they do it? Is that a video? How can they do a timer? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm nerding out on the web stuff. How can they do a timer video? Or maybe they just do a minute and then they don't expect people to stay over. Because doing that with CSS must be tricky, unless you use unmasking. Ah, interesting. Anyway, tonight at 5 p.m. PT, which is 1 a.m. Central European time. Um, the... It's ex exciting. I wonder what they will work on. Um, and if it's related at all to this that happened. Well, no, this happened last week, 24th. So yeah, if there was a commit now, I would be more uh, yeah, suspicious. Another change in by, in by the Apple team, Metal, re-enable Workbench Next Shadows. The Workbench Next is, is, a, is a current, basically, because that's an, <laughs> the whole Workbench has been removed. So um, yeah, apparently the shadows in Workbench were disabled on uh, Metal. Not anymore, so pretty nice. Next, the... <laughs> you work on next D for docs. Well, this change it's a documentation change, but it it's a it serves as a reminder that did you know that Blender works and um, Blender B, Blender Python the the API the BP, BPY can be used as a pip or Python package it's like pip install BPY version. Super nice. I mean, if you're into making this kind of development as a Python, like you do pip install whatever, pip install Blender, but BPY. Like, look at the documentation. Actually, in this this change, by the way, all the changes that I'm mentioning, they are in the um, blend in the Blender community blog post, Blender that community, Blender today live 420, 420, 420. <laughs> almost say there will be a Blender 4.0. 2.0. Huh, yeah. Anyways, next. The um, <laughs> link is in here and it's in the wiki building Blender other Blender BPYS module. So if I go to wiki, I say go to building Blender, I go to um, there must be other building Blender as a Python module. Interesting. Blazing fast. That is brilliant. Mostly Colin, it's, should I, I mean, you know, for the, for the release now, it's maybe I do some puns, but, uh, could be <laughs> for Blender for 2069. Nice. LTS. No, the LTS is a 4.3 that we're going to miss out because otherwise it will be a, 
Anyways, let, let, let's focus. Let's focus here, people. All right, next. Um, well, EV next. As we have a bunch of changes in EV next, um, it's still far from a from even getting close to EV itself. But there has been some work that is worth mentioning. For example, if you don't have enough video RAM, Blender will skip the baking. Yes, nice. Don't don't kill my computer. Next, the mesh volume bounce estimation now has two options. Uh, well, first, there is now a, a way to estimate the volume bounce. There is two methods, fast and accurate. And if you look at the pictures, this makes a lot more sense. So there is two methods, basically atomic XOR and hit list. You can read more about it here, but what it's more clear is when you look at what the two options. Fast and accurate. Fast, it, this is similar to how the denoiser is naming, by the way. The naming convention comes from there, but it's not related at all. The fast method is um, the, the non-manifold geometry objects are rendering correctly, but it is fast. Non-manifold is when there is holes in the, in the, in the mesh that it doesn't, it's not fully watertight. And uh, non-manifold geometry objects will affect other objects in front of them. So it is fast, but not really accurate. That's why there is an accurate um, setting now, which is limited to 16 hits per layer for now, for performance reasons. But in the pictures, you can see how this works so much. Um, there is an intersection here between these objects in when you have overlapping volumes. And the accurate, so this is the fast one, and the accurate should be more accurate so much as in cycles and EV now render pretty, pretty close, pretty similar. So yay for EV slash cycles. Well, they should say EV next. Let's see. Next. Shadows backface culling. This is awesome. Thank you, Miguel, for working on this because it makes yeah, shadow. Well, basically it's a performance improvement that can um, yeah, skip calculating like backface culling for, for other parts of Blender. It, it doesn't calculate whatever it's on the behind well, behind the the models. So performance, yay. Um, this setting should be available next to other kinds of camera culling for um, for camera, for example. So it's culling shadow and culling probe. So there is three methods for camera culling in Blender. In EV next. A refactor was done for material pipeline. This not only is a refactor internally, but there is also um, in, it will come in the in the UI as well in the shape of the rework the material panel here. So there is a few changes, some renaming, some some labels, but there is also now a displacement and the volume node three panels, similar to cycles. Um, the call back faces have been renamed to back face calling and the light probe. So the back face calling probe, the one I just mentioned, was renamed to light probe volume single sided, which it sounds well, if you look at it, maybe it sounds similar, but it is way more clear when you set it as a light probe volume single sided. So it basically only renders what it's, it's from one side, only from from the front, but it's on top of or uh, looking at the camera. And last but not least, there is a fix for uh, the reflection probes. They were not uh, updating properly. We move to G for Ghost and slash Wayland, so Linux stuff. IME su support using the text input protocol. So this has been tested with GNOME 45, but it adds capabilities to um, go since support for IME works on Wayland, but not on X11. So this way you can, IME is when you input, um, when you have, for example, in other languages, um, if you're using English layouts, uh, but it, you don't, you're not gonna notice, but if you use, for example, Chinese layouts where they press a key and then you have a, like a keyboard showing up to enter some words in English while you're keeping the rest of the keyboard in a different language, um, this helps a lot. 
and another one support for the dead keys via xkv compose dead keys worked on x11 but not on wayland or x wayland so you see X, X, xkb apis to support composition next gpv3 well i'm not gonna show all the changes in grease pencil because they are a lot as also cleanup fixes you can you can see there is 328 commits in that i'm covering of which 106 are fixes and 75 are cleanup you can tell that we are close to release here that's why the next so where is it i was mentioning well fixes there is so many but new features oh there is even uh, gpu and gl OpenGL also fixes but the gpv3 there is a bunch of new nodes supported in grease pencil remember now grease pencil supports geometry nodes uh grease pencil 3 sorry support geometry nodes and there is a bunch of new nodes that were added mainly by Dalai actually he's been coding like a boss Patrick also I, I, I saw Patrick today he was here at the studio um then transform operators to more nodes toggle cycling option in menu Matias uh, Mendiola has been updating some uh, menus and adding new menus like the point menu stroke and point context menus among other things but let's remember that Chris Pencil 3.0 is experimental so use handle with care <laughs> let's say okay next <clears throat> G4 geometry nodes convex hull okay people are getting excited about the convex hull node yes that is pretty neat for geometry nodes oh look at Dalai already is using his new profile picture this profile picture are the ones uploaded to the conference website and the photos section there is the impressions like people uploading their own pictures either way i just sorry for the side tracking here but these are pictures that the community have uploaded and while um yeah the show was live sometimes at the bar sometimes at the logo um but yeah there is <laughs> this is how the studio looked yesterday by the way a bit packed it's amazing that it has survived <laughs> the studio has survived this <laughs> um Anyways, the um, pictures are there on the <laughs> nice one. Um, the pictures are online over there, but you can also see the portraits. Everybody who wanted had their picture taken there <laughs> as a portrait. So yeah, pretty nice to to have a professional photographer taking pictures of people that are attending the conference or even group attending the conference so super nice look at the <laughs> captain dissolution you should see his presentation his lightning talk on the lightning talks presentation look at this team over here this picture jack luke hans sergey and fog so grease pencil cycle slash sculpt this now and grease pens and geometry nodes plus ui and mesh and so much more so what a team only in this picture this is amazing next the <laughs> remaining changes that i was going to mention was well we're, I, I was just talking about geometry nodes so let's go into the changes there is a new one new node this week the last two weeks added by jack even new split to instances node this node allow to splitting up a geometry into group a group is defined as an uh, as all elements with the same group id the output contains an instance per group the group id output can be used for further deterministic processing the node supports meshes curves point clouds and instances not volumes it only works on the top level geometry so it does not go into nested instances because it also generates new instances nice it did tell me there is a picture yeah cool so oh nice 
So you have a texture, you have a grid, and then you have a texture that you use that as a group ID to split the grid into instances. Then with some randomization here to translate these instances, then you end up with this from mesh to instance. That's amazing. This this will bring a nice. This is what this is pretty neat. Will bring some interesting results because instances are way more efficient. That looks super useful, indeed. Cool. Next, um, show grease pencil materials in material sockets. Speaking of grease pencil plus geometry nodes. Um, this is only done when the experimental grease pencil option is turned on, but yay, materials show up in the material, the grease pencil material socket. I wonder what happens if you enable, if you try to, well, probably won't render, if you try to uh, make a mesh use a grease pencil material. All right. Well, actually the geometry should be, is the one that takes the domain. Okay, next. Um, into the future, add forward compatibility for map range socket identifiers. The map range node is now ready for the future. Uh, <laughs> preparing for, who knows, dynamic sockets maybe. Forward compatibility is always a good thing. It's preparing now Blender for when you can open, so it can open files from the future. So Blender 5, Blender 6, who knows. Next change, avoid corner domain for blur attribute viewing. Yep, the blur attribute, when you were previewing the blur attribute node could be, uh, could be misleading because it was um, taking into account the corner domain and the face corner is not supported. In case the preferred domain is used, face corner shouldn't be proposed. This will make the viewer not preview the values on the point domains instead of the viewport. Is there a picture? No, but I believe it's great, like many other changes by Ilya. Thank you. And last but not least, optimizations. This uh, is a performance improvement. However, there it's done three days later or after there was, this is actually bringing back, restoring some lost performance from a few days back, thanks to another change. Um, yeah, so if you notice any down, um, any performance decrease, this is fixing it because it's something that used to take nearly 200 milliseconds, now it's only 15, so yay for that. <laughs> Internationalization, also plenty of, uh, of of changes there you can read about them on the uh, here in the full list Mat m for material x m for material x implement white noise node there is no float hashing material x so this is only approximate but hey welcome material x it's also related, also related to some changes in usd i'm going to mention later Mesh, add versioning to convert all face maps to fa to Boolean attributes. Yes, remember that face maps are no longer a thing in Blender, but they will be converted uh, when you load a new an old file into Boolean attributes on the face uh, domain. Add operator to select elements based on the Boolean attribute. So that way you can select face maps. Like some people were using face maps in 3.6 and prior just as a selection set, basically, um, which is interesting, right? It's a it, it face map is, doesn't get on the way of other um, like vertex groups. It doesn't pollute your vertex groups list, and it could be as a way to select um, faces. This is now done properly with the boolean attribute. As a, as a regular attribute, select by attribute. Operator as mentioned in the discussion in face maps removal. This is done in Blender 4.0 to limit the breaking aspect of the removal of face maps. The selection storage functionality is replaced by Boolean attributes. We already have a way to control the data in the Boolean. 
with the set attribute but we didn't have a way to convert the attribute into a selection so I guess this is also ported yeah this is part of blender 4.0 yay there's still some things coming in blender 4.0 new things small things but new things to minimize the breakage as much as possible speaking of breakage no not breakage but changing this is a this is a big change replace auto smooth with a node group auto smooth the, the the property that we all know from from blender in let's see is this the blender that i want no but it's a blender that i have so <laughs> this is a 4.1 but yeah this is this change is in 4.1 so in uh, some time ago the the attribute for sharp edges and the, basically what you what the auto smooth um, setting uses was moved or it was ported over to use more generic uh, the actual generic attribute system in blender for performance for making everything more generic more accessible so you can also access these values through geometry nodes and gives you more flexibility this has been um, the, the last remaining step basically was to be able to set a set, um, so for example, to set the smoothing of a, of a face, but also using geometry nodes. So there is a normal smooth by angle node group that you can use for setting this up. But also if you open, um, if I open an old file, for example, untitled.blend, very nicely called. I made this <laughs> file in Blender 2.79. That's why the header is at the bottom. <laughs> um, but if I go, well, first, if I try to find the normals panel, it's no longer here because the panel only was only accessible, well, only had the that one setting for auto smooth this is now accessible the the attribute should be in the mesh itself but also if um, ah, because i didn't have anything set there however it did have the based on uh, on the angle based auto smooth on so blender what it did is converting that into a node group that comes built in blender and it calls it auto smooth so it is the same thing like at the end of the day it is the same same thing and if you use the operator instead so if i go to monkey right click shade smooth by angle it doesn't add a modifier but it lets you change the setting from the this settings basically here so pretty much the same but it's a modifier now it's more flexible The end, I think we are already in the end, the end section. End for new splash screen for the main development branch. <laughs> so, okay, another another one of those changes that didn't, that doesn't get off blind. Why, why is the about page white by default? Anyways, there is a new splash screen in Blender 4.1 that will be used for the 4.x series and this one features the pets project or also known as wing it by the blender studio and hopefully now that you have 3.6 b, b 3.6 it's similar to what we had in in 3.0 so you have the stable release which is hey nice all sweet and then you have the unstable release which is danger danger so that is that is the that's the main difference. <laughs> um, one is for the LTS and the other one is for development. Just to signal how dangerous this is. The previous one, if you remember, is the one by um, this one with the Sprite Fright team, also looking into danger, dangerous areas, dangerous zones. Next the n4 nodes support looking up 
so node sockets by identifier and name. So this is mainly related to scripts, add-ons, and so on. So Python access to the sockets. There is a big change though. It is a it's it's can be there is a small chance that it might break existing scripts because the behavior changes for some inputs in some nodes. However, for the case where the function is used in practice, I don't really expect any breakage, says Jack Luke. This was discussed previously. Um, there's a patch already for this, but basically when you add node in, when you access the inputs through node inputs, most of the time it should work fine. However, there are some cases where the, the socket name is duplicated and that is not very reliable. So with this change, it, the hopes is that it will be more reliable. So read more in the commit just if you want to get more information. But uh, but yeah, keep an eye on that, especially if you do add-ons that might depend on this weird behavior of dual or of uh, having more than one socket with the same name. If you access by ID, it's just fine. Like if you do by, by index, so like zero, one, two, three, it should be okay. But this is for strings lookup. Um, next, the changes are for the S for sculpt. So in sculpt, there are three changes. One of them is user facing, preserve edge attribute on split with dynamic topology. Copy custom data and flag from the original edge to the ones created from it when splitting a long edge. Unfortunately, we cannot use the example edge approach as there is a temporary flag, but this sh um, should make it work in most, most cases. The other change is not user facing yet. It's uh, basically replacing a bunch of code, like a whole bunch of lines, with C set to store PVH node vmesh elements. What does it mean? It's an internal change. There is a slightly increase like tiny increase in memory in some cases but in all, some other cases in when using the topo there is a 10 percent decrease in like unexpected 10 percent decrease in memory usage so it is it's cool to see that developers are working on these areas also this next change is very interesting not user facing yet however always exciting, at least from a nerd point of view, that someone like Sergey Sharvin, principal engineer here at Blender, responsible for many, many, very important areas in Blender, it's adding timing information when logging um, to, to the logging of events when using BMesh PVVH, so sculpting, basically. Timing information for sculpting. Now, this Again, this is not user facing yet, but it means that they are tracking how long certain process take, which I hope it's for performance improvement. So al always nice to see this kind of, of, of uh, under the hood changes. The next is also in the letter S for shader. This one is a fix by Alaska, which also made it into 4.0 two weeks ago, actually 10 days ago. So if you haven't updated Blender in a while, this might be a good reason because it, uh, it's a fix on the code tint color, which was rendering wrong, really wrong. As in, if you look at the, the, the very nice example here by Alaska that makes it so on the left you have how it is in main how slightly changing the values the the green value here you see how it goes to green and then suddenly boom goes full red when it's a zero and uh, that shouldn't be the case when you have a, a, a little bit of weight in your coat then you should you shouldn't see any difference so this is this is a huge huge fix uh, if you had your your files rendering a bit wonky, this will fix it. Mm, next, I hope this uh, Christopher 3D sees this and maybe tackles it in a, a short video or something, because it's a very important change, fix more than a change. Um, 
it's time for you for UI user interface improvement on string well string search so searching in blender right when you search in blender it the the last words of the of the search of the of your search results are the ones that get priority so they are shown first however in the case of link drag search it is not um it's not always the case because there the last part is the socket name and the socket name is less descriptive than the nonth name right so if you want to search for an for a socket inside a node you usually want to you're going to type the name of the node not the name of the socket if you type socket color then you get <laughs> you get a bunch of color sockets instead of the color node so the there is now some special heuristics there so special work there trying to make this more reliable so the link drag then link drag search is not fully consistent with itself sometimes the last group is a socket name but sometimes it's also the mode of a node for example math add therefore the patch currently simply prioritizes all the words in the same node instead of priority prioritizing the first part this seems to work much better than before even if not perfect in all cases yet so for example here points before and points now points before it would list all the nodes that had the socket point but now it will highlight the point the noise that have the, the the nodes that have the point word in their name next font ui font weight you can now make your text bold or not or thin or whatever you want you can control the weight of the fonts in blender this is also thanks to the use of new font now that this is a variable font we can finally profit from finally from variable fonts among other things this um, change you can try it yourself if you go to the themes text style and then here you change weight so for example say that i want the panel titles to be bold this is now 400 by default this uses the if you're familiar with css this is the same um, so if you do like bold will be like 600 for bold 700 for like very bold <laughs> strong ultra i don't know what's the naming it's 900 but you can also have very thin ones like 300 for that extremely thin rendering or even 100 for the the ones you can barely even see <laughs> um, i think 400 is fine but this is a good change for accessibility this way users if i set everything to bold you can see this is a huge change for accessibility for people with uh, that are visually impaired and this i think it is a big improvement so thank you harley for working on that well this mega change this looks like a small thing just the weight added but this is it's like an iceberg you can see the tip and then you see the iceberg of years of work to get variable fonts in blender and getting all the metadata all the information from that font so yeah next change let me show the next change so oh this is a oversight add dynamic topologies toggle to sculpt menu yep the only way to toggle dynamic topology was with a with a shortcut or from the ui with the button so now there is an actual operator in the menu which means you can search for it isn't that great next use proper icons for nodes with the uvap picker yeah actually i've never I, i've noticed but i never thought i could fix it i don't know why but the it's one of those things that you just get used to it and forget that you can fix it for example this have you ever noticed how uv maps sometimes had this dot in there 
in the picker and why right we always use in the icon of something that it's more clear that gives you a hint of what what is there so now you not only have placeholders in 4.0 but you since 4.0 but now you also have the icon there so you can make a connection between the icons and this was done in multiple places um, for example particle uv you know that it's a uv map but you don't know yeah this is super nice also because in places like the uv map node it's not really clear what you can choose from here okay so uv map node, so maybe it is but it's always it's always nice to have it in more more places and this should also be done for other parts of uh, of blender that have this this issue um anytime you see a dot we should replace it with an actual icon the by when when looking at this I ran into the tangent node when I was looking into other nodes I ran into the tangent node and notice how bad it was as in it was the only node I can think of that was that had an horizontal layout <laughs> so he had the option first and then more buttons on the side the um, the change has been very simple it just makes it into a column no audio or it's just me is the audio working yes just you apparently um small change next modifier property icons so another similar change to the uv maps to well basically the same change but applied to modifiers and again this should be tackled in other places too this and uh, this is the other task where i'm mentioning this but uh it's part of all the same change next u for usd usd export to a single root primitive by default so instead of um having the option off that so you have to choose every time apparently based on some feedback by um, the community and people from other places from the industry uh, it makes more sense to always have usd export to a single root primitive by default and then uh, if you don't want it you can always uh, you can always disable it yourself and also the root primitive no longer requires the user to prefix the field with slash it will implicitly insert that for them and last but not least vulcan has some improvements which I'll, i can show it from here it's just it's it's very small but i like to show it as a reminder of all the work that is being done <laughs> for example and how early stages it is so for example this is actually today separate data transfer compute and graphics command this is a change from today with 900 additions 650 deletions like a big change all under the hood but something even as simple from the user point of view as drawing the node sockets wasn't working and has been fixed so you can you can see how as a user you wouldn't expect right it's like oh blender when when are they going to implement vulcan come on it's been a while you know every little bit even drawing the, the those circles in the nodes takes time next oh no there is no next i think that it's all for this week Let's see if there is any questions this week. There is four comments, so I'll try to answer them all. Let's go to all of them. So, Sansul CG says, hello, Pablo, hopefully you're doing well. I am, I am, I'm, I'm pretty well, especially after Blender Conference, full of energy. Although I gotta be honest, this episode today, I knew there was, an, there was not a lot of content, but I did it mainly, so, I can take off next week because of the release of 4.0 and focus on the release notes, which still needs a lot of work. And the week after, we're going to come back. And also, well, let me not spoil it. Drink some water, maybe. Okay, I am, I am, I am drinking hot water with mate, basically. Next question. Hi, maybe it's just a random crazy question. Is there a way to change scene by markers like we do with cameras? 
um, not directly in Blender, but there are there are like when you change frames, there is a, a handler, a pre uh, post uh, frame change, I think frame update, something like that, where you could look for a marker and try to match and change the scene with that. Um, you could, there, there is a, like there, the Python shouldn't be too hard for that, if I'm not wrong, right? Like uh, if you do, um, handlers, load pre, no, uh, frame, frame change pre, frame change post. So in every time that it changes, it's not gonna be fast, but every time you change frame, you could look for the active uh, marker in that one frame and, uh, and oh, what did I do? And just change it from there, right? Is there, is there an active, active NLA strip, active action? Yeah, look it up, sorry. But there should be a way, not built in. Hey, please create a mode for the tick tool to tweak the active element while preserving the current selection. Such a thing is very useful for mod. Tweak the active element while preserving the current selection. So it's gonna move the selection. While selecting elements and noticing something that requires some tweaking, there is no easy way to preserve a selection and tweak it and return to that selection. Um, yeah, that's a good point, but the Blender acts on the selection, so... Um, yeah, how, how, do, how would that work? Because, well, actually, can't you just change the... Mm, no, that would be active element. Um, so say I have this vertex active and then I use tweak tool. And then you want to change the active, but not the... Hmm. Yeah, I guess... Tricky though. So only change... So, so, meh, can be confusing. But yeah, I can, can, can imagine how would that be useful. So limit to active, but you can only have one element active at a time. Hmm. Interesting. Make a proposal and right click select. Oi Pablo says now I'm but still watching the Blender conference videos. I haven't watched them all. I have to. I need a, a weekend to binge match, binge watch the whole conference. Excuse me if this was answered in them, but any updates on baking stuff? And on the same note, say I'm still trying to figure out the best way to put a decal directly on textures using projections from an object of an, to another sort of paint it on. There's a lot of layout UX questions to solve there. I'm terrible with code, so it's probably a poor choice to study. That, and I heard whisperings of a texture editor comeback. Is there some truth there? I know there has been a few talks about using it for various things like a separate editor for noises or brushes. Um, I would suggest watching the Blender conference um tech for gold presentation there are there is there we have two of our best engineers working there on tackling things for development for cycles for well light linking in this case all these challenges and some might even like this one bit here light linking ev support for the future um, but yeah, filtering, GPU, like, you will get a lot more information in here. The team that can work on the other areas is basically working on this, so it is a um, part of it. I think next year, hopefully, everybody in the team agrees, plus with gold, um, that everything that has to do with UVs, baking, um, painting, rendering, material layers, textures, basically all that world should be should be priority because it's just just too much. It was it was promised so many years ago as many other things. We can't say that blender development goes slow actually. It's just it it does go fast. The thing is that some priorities 
take over some others. I mean, I'm pretty happy we have light linking. I think no one would trade that for anything in the world. Um, but yeah, we we have to admit that most people, most developers are, well, we only have a handful of developers basically that are working on the same, uh, under the same, in the same building on multiple other projects. So if one project takes priority, the other has to wait. But you can make, you can fix that by joining the Blender Development Fund. If you didn't know, you can join with a monthly subscription or donate once. If you only want to see, okay, here, go, have once. There is also an option here to donate once. Other than that, I think I'm going to be wrapping it up because next week we are not going to have a live stream. Blender 4.0 is at the door basically like almost literally at the door i'm looking at the door here i might can hear already people saying like hey can we release can we release yet is it can i can we go live on the stores on the <laughs> on builder on yeah 4.0 it's gonna be great 4.1 it's gonna be even greater and what is next even more so Thanks everyone for the very, very nice, especially people that have been at the conference and have said so many nice things about the show, about Blender today, about what means to them. And I hope you uh, enjoy it as much as I do making it. The week after the Blender 4.0 release, so that will be on the, no, no, so the, today is the 30th, the 6th, I'm not, gonna make the show on the 13th i'm gonna come back on the 20th it's going to be my last show for the year so i only have two more and after that there will be a small break and we might have someone else hosting because i'm going on holidays going back to argentina to see my family but there will be hopefully a replacement someone you already know and someone that already said like, hey, maybe I can give it a try and try to keep people updated with, Blend with what's new in Blender while I'm away. So happy thoughts. Other than that, I think we are in a good position. Yeah, so somebody, somebody mentioned a name in the chat. So yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah, I, you know already, come on. All right, thanks for staying until the end i hope you have a fantastic fantastic week wish you the best happy blending i'll see you again next week for another episode of next week not the week after after blender 4.0 it's crazy the week after blender 4.0 for another episode of blender today live sorry if that was loud it's never that loud have a fantastic week. See you soon.